breaking news, folks. Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization, hitting a new all-time high above $66,000. Right now, it's just taking a bit of a step back from that threshold, but it has been charging ahead. Bitcoin up about 5.6% over the past 24 hours. The largest cryptocurrency appears to have gotten a push on Tuesday from the launch of the ProShares of Bitcoin Strategy ETF, the first exchange-traded fund approved by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission to invest in Bitcoin futures. As I said, the, the futures, in fact, we think are, in, if anything, a better place for price discovery. The regulatory aspect and the ETF wrapper make it a very compelling alternative. Certainly, there are going to be plenty of folks who will invest in Bitcoin directly. And, you know, if they were investing in Bitcoin directly yesterday, I'm not sure they're going to be the first people to invest in the ETF. But there are a ton of people who were waiting for this opportunity both buy and hold investors and the trading community. We're, we're deep into a bull market right now. Um, I don't think we're at the end of that bull market, uh, hopefully, but uh, but the, the key, I think, internationally, not just for the stock markets, but also for the crypto markets, is uh, whether the situation in China is contained. After the massive wave of interest and investment in Bitcoin, they're understanding that they need to start diversifying away from the risk of Bitcoin alone. And as the digital assets grow into an asset class, they need more assets. And ETH is one that's captured everybody's attention, not just from its use cases, but that it fills all of the different super app, uh, capital asset classes that they look for. Bitcoin, it's Bitcoin reacting to Ethereum. I wouldn't say fully. It, it doesn't, it didn't hurt. You know, it's kind of like a match next to the gasoline and, and things just kind of lit on. But I think Ethereum was the starter. Well, Ethereum is outperforming Bitcoin, even though Bitcoin's up 70 percent this year. The S&P is only up about 20, 22 percent. And a lot of the alternatives like Avalanche and the other ones you mentioned earlier are outperforming Ethereum. Another thing that's been happening in the in the crypto world, which is very interesting this week, is that some of the altcoins most of them were drawn down to support levels along with what would happen with Bitcoin. But there's a couple of large cap projects that have done very well. One being Polkadot, which is down today, but actually reached on Monday new all time highs. And the other one is Solano, which is actually up to another new high as we speak. When I looked last, it was at trading at like 7660. And these are, are, are two uh, of the top cryptocurrencies by market cap. They're actually position number nine and number 10. No, it's not dead. I mean, people always say that Litecoin is dead. It's been that way for, for years. I'm the managing director of the Litecoin Foundation. I've been working on Litecoin full time for the past like four years. Um, recently, we're doing a big push to add fungibility to Litecoin. So it's a project called MWeb, which stands for Member Wimbo Extension Blocks. If the XRP ledger is fantastic for payments and payments are, you know, trillions of dollars, it's a massive market. Is that enough? And I think you can make an argument that it's not. So the XRP ledger doesn't have uh, any DeFi built into it. There's people who love XRP and there's people who love DeFi, and there just may not be much intersection of those two. Whatever obstacles appear in, the, let's say, in the XRP ledger ecosystem, either from the SEC actions or from other things, you have to think that because there's billions of dollars at stake that people will be able to come together enough to fix it. But that's really all that's holding these systems together. Uh, the GameStop issue really highlighted how blockchain infrastructure can help solve a lot of the problems in our markets. Ultimately, a blockchain allows you to know who owns what when. And you actually don't know that in today's financial markets. I don't